While we prepare for cooler temperatures across five country, the Arkansas Department of Transportation is doing so as well. Yeah, tonight on Arctic Arkansas, Matt takes us behind the scenes at an RDOT plow and salt facility to see how the state is getting ready for treating the roads and to see if they have any new tricks up their sleeves ahead of the upcoming winter weather. Arctic Arkansas, sponsored by McClarty Daniel and Arkansas Valley Electric Cooperative. Slick roads are no joke, and with winter approaching, the state is getting ready for its yearly battle on the roads against the snow and ice. We visited RDOT to learn more about the treatment process. Our number one defense, our backbone, is, is, is the, uh, the salt brine, of course. You know, putting that down, just a mixture of salt and water. I would say when we know there's a storm coming, uh, you know, snow, ice, whatever, we use that 75% of the time first. It's all about lowering the freezing or melting point. If you can help make snow and ice melt at 25 degrees rather than 32 or 33 degrees, that's good news. In stronger storms, though, they have to start intensifying their treatment with other materials. Then you have combinations of the salt brine mixed in with the beet juice, which it was introduced years ago, but still kind of gets the headlines when you say, you know, beet juice mixed in. And that really, it's, it's salt brine mixed in with beet juice that lowers that freezing temperature, whereas salt brine may, um, may allow uh, for the, the uh, moisture to freeze at you know, 30 to 32, the salt brine will lower it, it's gotta get even colder, 24 to 26 degrees before it freezes up, which can be a huge difference, you know, when you're talking from 24 degrees to 32 degrees. Um, you know, if it gets really, really rough out there, a lot of ice and everything, we'll go to straight sand. But what about those pesky storms where we start with rain and then switch over to ice and snow? Does the treatment still work? It gets a little tricky when, when it's going to come in as rain, but then that wave of frigid air is going to come in. It's when do you put down the brine because you don't want to put down too much and it all gets washed away. We feel like uh, as long as, you know, 20 to 30 percent of that initial application of salt brine uh, is able to take effect, then we've we've at least won that little battle. RDOT has made some big investments this year. Some newer trucks are added to the fleet. What's cool about these trucks is that they actually have a computer on the inside that changes how much salt is being added to the road dependent on the truck speed. That helps make the whole process more effective and then we don't lose extra salt into the ditch. It stays on the road. So it just pop up in there and there's two controls there in the middle. Yeah. That's all our controls, that's the computer. We have added in the last couple of years even more equipment. You know, we have total about 650 uh, snow plows. We have about 600 salt spreaders. Uh, this year we, we've got on order, we hope to get it in soon, 40 new uh, large dump trucks that we can equip with the plows. Uh, we're, actually, uh, we're actually adding a series of smaller, 10 to 12 smaller pickup trucks with smaller plows that can get in and maneuver smaller areas, a little more mobile. We ordered uh, 70,000 cubic yards of salt this year, the most we've ever added. More salt than ever and more new high-tech trucks. RDOT is ready for whatever winter throws at us. Preparing for the snow and ice where you live, I'm 5 News Chief Meteorologist Matt Standridge.